So good morning, everyone. And uh, this uh, training session has been held with a very clear intent, which is that uh, Frost, which is our core product in Learning Mate, and uh, it has its own design uh, uh, system or a design framework in place. And Frost development doesn't happen in isolation. There are a lot of projects out there which are being uh, executed, which are customizations of Frost, integration of Frost, where a lot of you are participating. And uh, it's very important that we familiarize ourselves with uh, you know, how this design system uh, is being managed what are the different manifestations of this design system and how is it that you know you, this design system was built or what is the what is the philosophy behind this design system uh to be more specific it is over and above the traditional uh design system concept which you read online or you are uh, familiar uh, familiar with this is more of an end to end design system where i think uh, once uh, Nilesh and so we'll start talking about it. You'll understand what I'm talking about. But uh, the important thing is to understand that tomorrow, if you get into a project, a project where cross implementation is there, uh, you should be prepared with a complete understanding of how the design framework of Frost works. And uh, the more that you are aware the easier it will be for you to do your implementations. So with that in mind, I think I'll just give it to Nilesh and Sohil to start the training. Yeah, thanks, Hemant. Let me know if you can see my screen. Mm. Yes, I can see your team. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so so this is just a basic like I think everyone is aware what a design system is, but just for a quick uh, thought, is so when we talk about a design system, like what generally comes to our mind. So there are different terms that are associated with design system. So. Uh, uh, these are a few other terms that are associated with the design system. There would be a brand identity, a UI kit, design tokens, component library, style guide, accessibility guidelines, downloadable assets, and a reference and a documentation site. Yeah. Uh, if anyone has any questions, you can just note it down, and uh, we can just spend the some time at the end of the session to answer the questions. So, uh, basically, a design system. Okay. So, uh, so this, at an organization level, if I say something, design system, then it would contain of a UI kit. It would contain a component library, which has design design tokens with guidelines and reference site. So this entire design system can be then implemented across different uh, platforms like a website and app development or marketing communication materials. And there would be a uh, consistency across designs in all the applications that we use in the design system. So for Frost, uh, initially starting with, and uh, okay, sorry. So these are some of the design systems that are there for reference, so um, so these are the some of the components. So each one has has the design systems and the components that are defined. So uh, similarly, we have also created a design system for Frost. So first we come to the Frost UI kit for designers. So I'll just uh, give you a sample walkthrough on how we use this Frost UI kit while developing, uh, while 
designing UI in XT. So so basically this is a design system library that is shared with the designers who work on the project and uh, we have different uh, color the color palette and the typography along with the components that are used for the ui so it is very quick to create a layout with the guidelines that i mentioned so So these are the components that we have developed till now, where we have the logos. We have the color palette. We have typography. We have icons defined. So in terms of specification also we have also mentioned as to what would be the gap between icons and what would be the hover state and the keyboard state and what would be the size variations when you're using icons so this will help the designers to actually maintain consistency across the product and then we use uh, material icons for the uh, for this design system so we, and here also we have kept two variations in the library and there are also some custom icons not available that have been created as per the product requirement. And uh, then we have buttons. So here also we have mentioned the stage for the buttons, so the default over and with icon, without icon, and also the spacing in between the buttons. Uh, we have input fields that have been defined. So I'll just quickly. So here I have my character styles that I use. So probably So here we have defined all the states. So whenever I'm creating any layout, this helps me to create it much faster. So I can replicate. If I want to have a button, so uh, here I have the hover state, the keyboard state, the default state. Adding is also maintained in the text. Yes. what you are yeah. displaying here is more a ui kit which yeah. is uh, something that you have as a file right which is a yeah. separate file altogether which you have published as a library and therefore mm -hmm. you have added this as a library here yeah to go one step back what you yeah. see here there are different libraries and one of the libraries is the design system and it is so do you want to just open the design system primary library from where you publish 
yeah. also so that it helps. So this is the main file where all the components have been designed. The uh, this uh, this main source file is not shared with uh, all the members who are working because if there is any change, it goes after a lot of discussion, and after that only any component or any changes are made, or any new component is added to the library. So whichever components are finalized, only those are shared in the library, and uh, only actually the since me and Soil are working on this, so only we have access to the main source file. Yeah. So there is. Uh, is there is there any metadata associated with this library so that we can the search filter is activated to, to search the components? There... Not a metadata, but a mm -hmm. name. Yeah. The um, you know very consciously in place. So like for example, what happens here is if you go back to the main library, right? What Nilesh is saying there is that there is one uh, master file which we call as the design system. It actually should be a UI kit, right? That is the correct terminology. This is not the design system. It, this is just a UI kit. But uh, because we've already shared it with a lot of people, we are not changing it right now. What happens is this is the master file when where all of these components are finalized, right? Not everybody in the team has access to it only the core owners who know exactly in which artboard what are the components that are got designed and all of that are there everything that is saved finalizes saved on the left hand side if you see there are components on the left hand side this is what is saved here and once this is all good on the left hand side all of these are you know with all of its states they, these are in place this is published so you want to show that publish icon on the top right the publish icon uh, the, on the design, yeah. Besides the document assets on the right hand side, you see that icon? Yeah. Ah, that one. So if you know, this is where you publish a library and once you publish that library, any person, you can just share this library with anybody in your team whoever has xd they can uh, access that library they can save it in their uh, you know they can access basically they can access the library in any new artboard that they open up this design library is always so like what nilesh did right uh, he opened a new xd file and he had that library available with him all the time so any updates that happen in the future any updates that happen in the future and once they are published they start reflecting in that shared library so nobody has access to this file, but they have access to all components in that library. And that is what we know, the whole model that we've worked out, uh, have been working with, has really been beneficial, especially to the core designers and any new teams that work along with us. So like if there is an enterprise project that uh, gets uh, there and there are new designers that get aligned to that project, you know, they are given some understanding of the product and then they are sh shared this library with them. So not this one, but if you go to the other file that you were showing, right? So they will always see that design system library on the left hand side. They can keep pulling um, all buttons, all components from there and keep using. So they don't have to really worry about a lot of these um, aspects of how, how pop ups are going to be there. What is the position? A lot of these components are already in place and they have to do their design. And of course, we have a workflow where we go through a review kind of calls where Sohail Nilesh confirm that you know the components that are used are correct uh, and if it needs any kind of an adjustment flows at a low fidelity level at a high fidelity level both stages but this is really brought a lot of consistency in the patterns that we use in our designs altogether and the names that we are given 
it becomes really easy for one to search to your question. So the names that are given only are taken care because there is no other search otherwise here in the UI. Yeah, that, that's nice because uh, what I uh, uh, delete is it's more kind of uh, L word that you are used nowadays in the uh, learning method. So my, my my basic question is that uh, how, how that components are being labeled in such a manner that the, these search functionalities work to find the correct uh, component. What is the process? In where where are you asking? Is this in the XD uh, or you are talking about in? Uh... No, you, you just published uh, this uh, the primary tool component, right? So mm -hmm. there uh, must be some uh, name because if I, if I, uh, so, well, can you please search any component, any anyone? A published course eighteen pixels. So where is this published course eighteen pixels are being written? So that this search filter uh, uh, filter out all from the library. It is there. Where is it written? You are saying. So in the yes. master library, if you go to the master library, yeah, where you have the master file, where you are defining that, when you are creating this comment, just create a component quickly. You may not want to publish it later, but uh, you can delete it. Yeah, so this, when you are saving this component, yeah, here is something that you will, you know, put a specific name that, you know, typically designers will search for something like this. Okay, okay, okay. Got it, got it. So yeah. that is the thing that I just want to show. Yeah. yeah. And this we use the most commonly terms that have been used. Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. So that mm -hmm. uh, everybody can have that uh, idea that uh, this could be the uh, keyframe that we can search on. Yes. And okay. and one uh, another question that it just came in. So you are showing that I can uh, pages, right? And mm. I, I, I saw that 18 pixels, 22 pixels are being written there. Yeah. So are we following the accessibility protocols for this iconography, the color contrast, all these things? Yeah, everything is maintained. Everything is maintained. Yes, because uh, accessibility guidelines uh, for that, uh, that handed device, the the finger that minimum dimension is be 40 to 40 by 40 actually. That's a good question. So what we have done is, if you look at the hover state and the hit state, they are bigger, right? But visually, that icon is not as big, mm -hmm. right? So if you look at the default state, which is the first one on the left hand side, yeah. it is. 18 pixels but if you look at the second one which is a hover state and the next is the keyboard state they are all 40 pixels yeah mm, the icon is 18 mm. the heat area is 32 mm. ah, 30. is 32 but it, it, uh, yeah. but it, it's not reached to 40 okay, okay. yeah because uh, I'll tell you what, you know, our, uh, the users that are, that Frost is really targeted towards is not mobile, but it is until iPad. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, what uh, I faced actually in uh, in our ongoing project, the mm -hmm. clients has complained that uh, they, the, the kids who are using uh, our interactive player, mm. uh, they are struggling to hit uh, those icons. So we yeah. need to make it uh, those icons to 42 by 42 dimension, the minimum one. Is because anything which is elementary, especially your age group matters, right? So there yeah, is that's true. Yeah. So, so in, that, in that case, that uh, when we provide solutions for the higher ed uh, segments, so they are comfortable with this 32 by 32. So yes. they don't have any, any such problem. But the kids right. that uh the below uh, below 10 years and so they are having uh, these kind of difficulties yeah and that's a very good point that you have brought up because see what we are doing as a design system here you know of course uh, what we've done to start with is if you go to the first page where you have the typography and the color contrast then we've selected the color contrast we've seen to it that um uh, it, so are all the typography that is there or even the color contrast there is already combinations that are tried out which will not fail accessibility okay and we at every point of time when we defined this we have got an accessibility person to cross check with us 
right and we have got a in frost we have got a very strong accessibility team we have big accessibility team who are working along with us from so from the start point where we said okay define typography define colors define color combinations right define patterns for uh, ui all of these have gone through uh, even in the design not even in the design system i'm just talking about the ui kit where we're still in the xd mm -hmm. we've got these confirmations from the accessibility team and our our users uh, for frost are uh, all uh, you know content developers and uh, say teachers uh, right all of these people project managers and all of them so for us you know with this user base and accessibility these are decisions that you take mm -hmm. for you especially for elementary when you know it is going to be kids you know what are the uh, what are the different gadgets that they are going to be accessing this on uh, you would have a different uh, baseline uh, or uh, you know definition of your uh, components so that will all vary from your user base really and the gadgets that are going to be used mm -hmm. okay. yeah thanks, thanks for that yeah but the starting point mostly is uh everywhere the same any project that you take up is that you define the typography you define the colors based on your branding you want to keep it neutral not neutral c2 to your color contrasts are defined uh, check accessibility at every point of time uh and uh, create ui patterns and all of that and nilesh is going to be talking on exactly when should you define that also mm -hmm. right so yeah Yes, English. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so uh, this is how we basically uh, use the UI kit to design the UI like UI faster and more consistent. So. Uh, So basically, the UI kit and the design library will help the designers to create faster and consistent designs. And uh, then we come to the component library, which is used by the developers. So I think Sohil will take over from your and hello, hello everyone. Hope my screen is visible, right? If anyone can confirm. Yes, it is visible. Yeah. So uh, I want to fill some gaps in this uh, particular session. When we say a design system, this is not only related to designers. So when we say a design system, it involves a lot of team members, which uh, eventually make this happen. So it start with, uh, starts with a designer taking from the, uh, the inputs from the product itself. And we design from the XD, and then we finalize over it, groom it, we debate on it. And after we are done finalizing, we list down those <clears throat> on the XD file, which, which you currently saw. So in that, we are defining the states, hover state, keyboard state, the accessibility checks, the hit area, the color contrast, and other things. After doing the finalization work, what we do is we transform that to uh, front-end folks like HTML, CSS, and team. So in that, we are covering the uh, functionality part of the accessibility and the UI uh, component level. So the component level which we thought of creating was uh, once you create a component, it should be reusable to uh, multiple places or any given pages. So after doing that, uh, we create the system. And after HTML, CSS, we combine with the developers, the Angular team, to make this a really component where in you can the developers can easily plug in those buttons so every time you don't need to create a manual button give alignments padding spacing everything so this is the first approach with which which we started after designing and getting the html css correction checks and those we created this button so this particular button is the actual component which you can see throughout the frost okay so all the hover state, if you see the keyboard state, it will call at the background what accessibility uh, uh, sound it needs to be created, like what is this button about and all those. So we created this particular library for 
mainly for developers and it can be also used for the tester testing team as well to cross check with, uh, whenever there is a reviews going on or any product development is going on so this is the one primary button i'll show you one example this is a primary button and if there are any variations like you want an icon before that or after that so by default we have kept the icon before that and if you want to configure it after the button it can be configured at the details below so all the coordinates are been mentioned for the developers here so once i add a button i add a button i suppose want to make it a delete button and i want to preview it it will instantly show the preview how it looks and is it valid or not so we have two types of uh, icons which we have designed in the design system so basically we started with uh, material as the base font so 80% of the 80 or 85% of the design system icons which we are using it is from the material icons because it is a huge library and it is giving that uh, opportunity for us and if there are places in the product wherein the material icon is not covering up we are creating a custom icons for that for this particular thing also we have created a design token wherein all the listed icons has been mentioned so all these icons are custom customly created from uh, from scratch so on the product if you can see there are red locked icons and there are accordions review crowd sale and the icons which are not covered in material icons so once we see that with the icons and without icons i simply create a generate button so this is the part where most of the developers would find it very useful for them so this is the uh, code which gets generated this is the component and the css or we call as design, design tokens and the html file so this is how simply it uh, generates a component so this is one particular field which we have specifically worked on because this is the part which is like very much used across the products may it be model pop up or any forms or anything so this is the one and we have the variations of primary button secondary button tertiary button so this has been gone through several uh, reviews and finalization how primaries should be shown on the product once on a once on a form or if there are multiple second reactions that can be multiple and it is the least one which we call it as a tertiary button and there are text links so and all the keyboard state has been checked and has been worked on and finally it comes to the icon buttons where where there are individual icons icon based actions so in this we have kept a mandatory tool tip. like whenever there is an icon it should have a tool tip for the users to know and for the accessibility check as well it also covers the uh, custom icons as well and there are some other variations which we have created suppose an alert kind of thing or success criteria or a reverse branding so this particular design system which we created is not used by designers and developers it is also being used for the marketing team and when we say marketing uh, it comes to the branding part like if you see many companies wherein like the product logos are not consistent across like the dimension is be breaking out or that all issues are happening. so this is a centralized position where the all the icons has been put on and when you see a frost product wherever you see a header logo all the logos are been pulled out from this particular uh, centralized system so this is one part which we have successfully achieved on the product and we are moving ahead with individual components and pulling out from the centralized system to the product itself so soon you will guys will see the product uh, getting a centralized uh, components which also like saves all the time like getting into the review calls and 
uh, getting accessibility checks the qa teams get a lot of like there are a lot of back and forth happening due to that all. if we manage to do a design system it is very convenient to update and manage this particular thing from a centralized position view suppose in future i want to update there is a brand change happening towards the product so currently what is the process like you need to go manually and do the header updates and all but in centralized thing you just update at one particular position it will reflect everywhere else yeah i think that is it from my side if you have any queries you can just list it down and we can take it at the last like any one of them hello yeah yeah nilesh you can take it up yeah thanks yeah i think rubhjyoti has a question can we take it up now oh yeah. uh, let me check yeah he's raised hand yeah, yeah. rubhjyoti go ahead yeah so uh, can we uh, share the screen again and go to that uh, button yeah so we are using that uh, icons right so hmm. uh, the primary button with icons or 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 even icons so uh -huh. what will be the tag that uh, uh, it will be rendered on the browser is, is it the i tag or em tag so this will be the button tag no no the button should be the the, the button element but what about those icons icons will render that uh, within i tag or em tag uh we are taking as a ligature part so currently uh, we are adding as a ligature mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter you use i or uh, em so it will count it as a ligature only no, definitely but uh, for, uh, for so for the for the rendering in the browser so it, there uh -huh. should be one one uh, tags uh, so that uh, material icon can understand that uh, it will render within the proper uh, shape and form so we are not looking into that particular area we are just adding as a span and in a span we are using as a ligature if my screen is visible you can see it and mat icon role img uh, add so there is a mat separate font library called okay it. okay 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 so i i was curious to that if there is a, the i icon or not the i yeah. tag or not because yeah. nowadays is a sonar has giving too much travel uh, and throwing too much yeah so that. we have gone through all the reviews and based on mm -hmm. that we took the decision okay thanks thanks yeah any other questions no no yeah if anyone has we can like take it up now yeah i think nilesh you can take it up right i have one question it's about the primary uh, primary button so i think mm -hmm. when the ui kit was uh, presenting that time i see the primary button it shows in the black and i think on the hover it was showing the blue correct so is there any reason that why it is uh, giving the black so when we started so uh, the approach was to take inputs from the product itself not create something new from the out of the product so initially we started uh, if you see in the earlier days we had used greenish fade of uh, these colors and there are tools where when you can uh, add few colors of the product and it will give the list of the items uh, colors which you can use across the primary action the secondary and the tertiary one okay yeah 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 to add to what sohail said right i see uh, frost works with different customers so we have a co branding uh, with uh, that uh, you know any institute or organization that we work with so you could have the frost logo in the product all of the products you would have the frost logo on the left hand side while you would have the say accelerated learning learning which is a more like red and orange kind of a uh, logo which is on the right top right you could have say university of phoenix and things so they could have say orange and uh, all different colors so what we have done is the frost is typically um a very neutral kind of a color palette that we have taken and 
any color that is added on the ui is only to um, have some function say like for example you want to communicate a status of an item right uh, so all of that you know so we have reserved colors very very carefully only for functional items therefore you will see that everything else is very neutral because it has to go along not only with frost but any kind of a branding color palette that we are not aware of that's the primary reason got you rupali thank you so much and i'm really appreciating you to the the entire team that who is working on this design uh, system that they have ensure that the ui library has a uh, accessibility compliance yeah I'm really happy for that thank you yeah thank you thanks karuna yeah thanks so now coming back to uh, the design like uh, so do all projects actually need a design system some projects may need only a design library and when we talk about the design system then we, the design system is in is an combination of all the ui kit a component library and a reference site so the task and the effort that goes into creating a system is huge so probably some projects which are smaller they might not need a design system probably a ui kit can be sufficient enough for the project or sometimes there is a component library which can be sufficient for the project so it all depends on the on the project whether we want to create a design system for the project or not and uh, there that when like when when we start a design system so probably uh, what we think is that we uh, we create a toolkit uh, and the components and then implement onto the product but uh, that is not the uh, right, uh, right way to go about onto creating a design system because probably if i start creating components before uh, starting on a the product then what will happen is that i will create uh, for example around 200 or 300 different types of components which might out of which only around 40 or 50 might be used in the actual product so the best practice is to get the components from the product analyze the products and when you see a component or a uh, that is going to be reused across the product then we define it as a component rather than just randomly going on creating components yeah so this is all about the frost design system yeah krishna okay i have a question regarding the <clears throat> so you mentioned about having this global uh, what do you say for the html and anything you have something uh, global right so whatever change you do it is uh, it reflects across all the uh, screens throughout right so for this do you for the design system specific do you maintain a separate style sheet altogether or is it how does how does this work for you generally so you you say centralized css is there right so yeah. <clears throat> so you for any project that you start you just add the style sheet to the project that is there yeah. and 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 i mean like so let's say there is a pattern change somewhere okay mm -hmm. uh <clears throat> maybe tomorrow down the line for, for in frost you decide uh you know maybe xyz button shape has to change i'm just giving you a rough idea okay and you do that and this centralized css is already implemented in other other projects so how do, how does it reflect on it will those reflect. Things? it will automatically reflect acha Suppose so you have comes... removed the border radius, and mm -hmm. wherever you have used that particular style sheet, it will reflect. Okay, okay it's a, it has a centralized path as yes, well as in centralized even path. If already. Pro, even if this frost was customized for a separate customer, and so that means that that frost is with them, right? So even yeah. then, it would reflect there. Yeah. So because the position is something which is from the shell, like. No okay, but wouldn't we need the approval from the customer if we are doing such changes? If it's a global change? Uh, no, I don't think so because the product is ours, right? The uh, mm -hmm. functionality part. 
Yeah, but customization you have already done based on the customer's requirement. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, so tomorrow if you are doing a change, in general, so there can be a separate document for that. So okay. if you are customizing, because the basic level which we are giving is a our design system. Okay. Okay. And if further they want to modify it, then it's their call. So there would be a separate licensing to be. Uh, in that case and, and yeah so what happens when let's say you customized you know you used your design system but based on their requirement you have customized something okay yeah. now tomorrow uh, and there is a centralized css in it tomorrow if you are doing a change in your centralized css <clears throat> wouldn't it impact the customers this no. thing? that is what, so what will happen if there are two customers and we are giving, mm -hmm. uh, trying to give them the our design system so in mm -hmm. that case, we'll change the path for that particular uh, customer and make that separately as a design system for himself. Ah, so whatever changes you do won't reflect in that. Yeah, okay. it won't be because ah. customer has initiated like they want it as mm -hmm. a separate. OK. Anyways, they are modifying it. So it gets out of that centralized thing. Okay. If I'm not wrong, so uh, if, suppose uh, the customer is uh, XYZ. Mm -hmm. So you, the requirement uh, that uh, Krishna has, Krishna is a customer and the company that uh, Krishna do need uh, this salt, uh, design system for uh, his uh, uh, his requirement according to. So you just uh, make a copy of the vanilla uh, frost design system and uh, provide to uh, Krishna, right? Yeah. Just a, just a replica, just a clone of that uh, yes. uh, vanilla frost design system. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, so this uh, the uh, centralized CSS contains everything, including the color palette and everything. Everything, so? all the design tokens, components, and everything. Okay. All right. Yeah, and uh, to that point, you know, uh, see, uh, this is uh, like a parallel project. When we are, so we looked at different things. One, we looked at the UI kit, which is more like in an XD. We looked at uh, the design system, which is more, uh, uh, you know, which is something that you have the code and all of that there. Now, the important aspect of a design is what we realize that this is like a mini project that you run parallelly while you are doing everything else for the product, right? So this yeah. is a mini project. You need a design effort. You need development effort. All of that, which is has goes parallel. We've always struggled with having a dedicated team working on the design system because there is always something far more important that you are need to the um, need on the core product. Right. So we had to so many times this is and this is the you know, while you see a good picture here, you have to also understand that there are challenges when we talk about design systems. Right. Uh, because so all of this, you know, people not available, all of that. We've gone really slow. We really picked up a lot of pace at the start, but developers got pulled into something far more important and all of that. What we have done as a different approach now is that when you are really de uh, developing uh, a new ui pattern for a say specifically in the product we generalize it you know so we develop that we generalize it we baseline it and then we bring it back in the design system that is a different approach that we have taken because we don't have the bandwidth available for completely a focus on a development of a design system right so that is an approach that we have taken we have we are again you know we have recently started testing all of this so not every component uh, in frost right now uh, has uh, uh, all of these components because uh, most of you know that frost is a uh, has got a lot of legacy patterns uh, it's been there for a long time while we are uh, uh, reviving and uh, um, you know recreating some of these patterns and all of that with completely a new code and all or new designs and all of that we are starting to pick whatever is in the design system from here and baselining it so one, one component at a time we are taking it in one product uh, accepting it and doing all of those checks then taking it to the next uh, another product so we're doing it very gradually very step by step yeah, so what Rupali said, the second approach, if I can share you guys, uh, due to non availability of the developers and the design team specifically working on their individual tasks. So, what we came up with the second approach is okay, like we create a CSS file based on that, 
a CSS file would be called out for all the developers and they can use the buttons and other components which we have already created. So it won't be uh, as a uh, centralized path, but it will be a plug and play kind of thing. So if you guys are familiar with the bootstrap and CDN kind of links, so it will be acting that specific thing. Suppose this font libraries. So suppose you have called a design system CSS file at the page of uh, product page, and you just add this kind of code and it will take that up. So this is the second approach we did. And we are currently doing that. Okay, I was you about to all ask. the variations and everything. Yeah. It, yeah. Yes, well, uh, so uh, do we have any option like uh, currently we are using only the left side icon, right? So mm. do you have any options so uh, user can uh, change the icon position left to right? Yeah, we can change that. So if you can see the screen, it is all mentioned what class and whatever you want to make those changes. And uh, any user can change also rounded corner to square and right? No, no, it won't happen that way. Then you are going out of the design system. Then. So uh, always we need to uh, and add the button tag or anchor tag. Can you change the button tag to anchor tag? Oh uh, no, specifically because this has been uh, developed in that way. If you want to use an anchor tag, you can use the link link items so the link which you are seeing right now this is a button tag but it looks like a link and this is the anchor link so if you are specific with your requirements and your finalization over the design you can take that call okay. but as a design system for a centralized thing you need to use a button for a button because this has been went through a lot of accessibility checks and sonar re uh, reading and everything someone want to change the accessibility uh, uh, content also they mm -hmm. want to uh, change the area level then how to change the area level in our button tag have any options in there area label yeah area label i am not aware of because i'm not into development core development i'm okay. limited to html css only so if there are any developers who can yeah bunty krishna you would want to yeah. right, because they have used the design system uh, no, 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 yeah, no. I, I think somojita also work on that and uh, he mentioned that they are using the area level on first system ecosystem uh, earlier i heard also so, so are right. area level so the, the anyway any anywhere if we implement this button at any point any point of time we can have that area level implemented for any code so that's yeah, not purpose yeah yeah we we can we can add that any because if we don't have that area level so uh, will just uh, utter that it's a button but uh, to be very specific we need that area level declarations nothing like no, that no 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 yes yeah, i understood but the project my question was anyone want to add the new area level so can you add so the... you you can add because you just uh, copy paste that button property on your uh, html so if there is no area level declared within the button so uh, uh, you can you can add it okay do you have any uh, no uh, thought about the year? area label consist of accessibility check if it level is, is it related to accessibility yeah uh -huh. so that is covered in this button and uh, one 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 just uh, uh, question just hits my mind so uh, as we are talking more about the accessibility so do we consider high contrast uh, for the digital system right at this moment uh right moment we are not uh, looking yes, at yes that yes question. yes we are considered the high contrast also high yeah contrast. we have so uh, see, uh, so we have all of these buttons that we have looked at, or the font and background and all of that. We have tested it for high contrast already, right? That yeah, I we have tested, but we have not customized according to the high contrast. Suppose you have a dark background, you're not actually changing the color. You're giving the other way around, like uh, giving a border in a way that it is visible. At that, that level, we have done. Then how they because uh, right at this moment the text are in black right and the background is uh, white so it's it's a very that uh, ultimate uh, uh, color contrast ratio that we can consider. 
but uh, suppose uh, i change the background to black hmm. so do we the text uh, converts to white yes it does it does na no? okay okay thank you but yeah. so as well the uh, a quiz form on the chat if you guys can go through and quickly fill those and this is a mandatory quiz and on individual questions there would be a two points would be considered on that so if you guys can go and just fill it yeah i think arup had a comment yeah yes yeah hi so first of all thank you uh, soel and nilesh for sharing this uh, so i would like to ask you that uh, there can be a basic spacing system uh, we need for a design system i mean basic spacing means i want to show that the uh, spacing between the components whether it is vertically presented or uh, horizontally presented i know that is uh, uh, and there could be a variation uh, basis on that yeah uh, basic spacing system yeah so for the base what we have started is uh, using a eight decimal a decimal of eight we have kept as a base but in so places place. yeah but in places where there are groupings happening suppose you have a set of actionable icons and mm -hmm. you have another actionable icons which is part of another group so that particular group will have a 24 px of gap just to uh, make it all right but, area and all. yeah yes but uh, we don't have a specific page for a spacing system so that's why i'm asking so is it needed and there could be a variations and yeah, yes it is always a uh, designer's call to uh, take the variations and uh, put it on the design yeah, so basically we go into multiples of it as soya suggested but uh, yes. it all depends on the layout also because uh, it is uh, now see that is the design call because there might be some layouts where if i keep a so i can't define that each component will have a 24 pixel spacing or a 32 pixel spacing so it no not for not for each one at least i i just want to have a basic uh, spacings that uh, that should be mentioned in a separate page that's yeah so so for example if i am talking about input field so if uh, if you go to the design system uh, the xd file then there so there we uh, we have tried to mention uh, the link the published file so yeah. if you can just send the... this one no 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 the xd only display that file no? library yeah library library you are saying yeah this one yeah so so your if we uh, go to tables uh, and uh, yeah in between buttons so or if you go to a form uh, or uh, you go to the drop down menu or tab so there we so so you are also like for example in between lines so 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 here we are mentioned like uh, to maintain at least 24 pixels so so there are certain places where we can but at the end it is it all depends on the design and the components that are there whether it is uh, uh, visually looking cluttered or you need some breathing space in between components so you can take right. this as an example you have working on a large artboard mm -hmm. and you want mm -hmm. a specific uh, padding and alignment to it so it will have a yeah. larger padding and those kind of interaction but if you are working on a smaller area suppose a commenting area or an input field the amount of padding and it will uh, change accordingly as per the needs like but we are taking yes. eight as a base and if it further shrinks down it can come to four as well okay okay as far as there are groupings and you want to differentiate between the components like i said okay, there are three two groups of actionable icons and they are side by side and you want to visually show that those are groups so you can simply show it by giving a proper uh, spacing to it like 24 okay. okay yeah so if you calculate eight so based on that so anyways you are giving eight eight uh, pixels of gap between individual icons 
All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, so uh, <clears throat> it's again about the centralized CSS that we are talking about. Uh, so to let's say the customer. Uh, okay, let me rephrase it. So to what extent can the customer customize it in order to still stay in the centralized CSS? You got my question. So they still want to be on the centralized CSS to get the future updates of whatever design system changes that you're doing. Okay, uh, but they still want to customize some parts. So what are the things that they can generally customize to still be on this centralized CSS? So until they are using a design system and mm -hmm. the component is being used on individual pages, mm -hmm. they can customize in that area. But if they are changing some uh, the approach of that component, mm. it will go out of that scope and out of when that you say approach. Sector. Can you elaborate it a little bit when you say the approach? Approach suppose you are calling uh, a single file from Google Doc, and you are changing the position and uh, everything to something else. Suppose one drive. Okay. And you have a defined list of items as a component. Mm -hmm. Suppose I'm giving a button name, and then you are changing that button name into call to action kind of thing. Correct. Okay. So you are changing the. Uh, aspects of that component okay so so let's say they are using components from that centralized css hmm. <clears throat> but they can still customize the colors that are needed in their right. pro product and they are still going to be on the, the uh, centralized css yes maybe changing the other properties like the like uh, border radius or something else will actually move them away from the centralized css no is border that... radius also they can do until okay. they are into that uh, the name convention of that button got it okay yeah, yeah so uh, krishna to add to that you know we are discouraging any kind of styling specific to the customer okay so we are not saying that okay the core product or uh, the saas would have say you know the dark button for primary but uh, for any kind of an enter enterprise customer they could have a red one for a primary mm -hmm. we are not doing that so we are discouraging any kind of styling uh, customizations uh, for custom from customer to customer <laughs> okay so yeah. the, the reason i was asking this was i don't know if you remember serify one of the projects that we worked on so mm -hmm. we created a single code base pro project for it, I'm like a uh, code base platform for it. They had multiple different platforms. We created a single code base. Each had their own styling or color schemes. Okay. But the patterns were same. So if I want to try and use the, say, the design system in such situations, I just wanted to understand to what extent can I keep the, you know, pattern library in a single CSS. So that's what I was trying to. So when let's say in one plat one of the logins they had a say blue button in the other one maybe they had a orange button I'm just giving you an idea so <clears throat> but the pattern of that was same just the colors were different uh, yes Krishna because uh, even uh, in our OUP uh, the e-reader and uh, interactive player does have multiple themes in concept mm. based on that uh, credentials and the permissions and hmm. the education group so yeah. they have different look and feel but the but the system is uh, the same the code base is same hmm. the e-reader and interactive player but based on the credentials the look and feel are different yeah so that is where i was thinking of let's say we are again going to work on one uh <clears throat> in in the future maybe we are working on a single code base platform so how do i manage such situations i was just trying to understand that <coughs> but yeah I, I, in that case uh, it, it, it probably needs to make uh, multiple uh, multiple design systems uh, based the on the design particles. in the same file the patterns and components should be in a single file yeah and probably custom create a separate class i mean color based or theme uh, you know yeah, theme it's a theme theme kind of right. concept the basic skeleton is having that uh, masterpiece and a piece of code uh, and on top of it we just enforce the theme so that it mm. could just uh, 
do the entire cosmetic changes but but yeah. see uh, as per performance issue so i you know of late i've been reading about all these things so when you're considering performance in platform you know on platforms and everything then generally they <clears throat> suggest having a single style sheet and not multiple style yeah sheets. that's a big challenge so, now we are uh, facing because would, lots yeah, of that, calls are uh, parallel calls are going uh, to the server yeah so that that uh, so in that sense if i'm looking at it having one style sheet which is like the skeleton and one for theming again it it adds up to a load time but yeah there, there has to be some kind of solution which ha which we have to come up with yeah but okay i got it i just wanted to understand that in fact uh, krishna in oop we need to think about that area level decoration from uh, from <laughs> user to user actually okay <laughs> so we need to create a separate configuration uh, panel all together to 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 put the data dynamically and based on the credentials that suppose uh, suppose the user one have uh area label close but uh, the user to uh, have the requirement it's uh, back to home screen so for that thing for that purpose we need to make the configuration panel yeah from customer to customer you might want to have a different strategy of how you want to set up a design system it can be a single design system preferably where you say okay i have primary buttons and based on uh you know all your products uh you could have themes there so you, you know it doesn't become really difficult to manage your design system if you have multiple design system it will be you know further more difficult that you create a pattern and you keep updating different design systems right so it can be just one place like how say like for example material uh, does it you have one pattern say you have a drop down but they could have four variation and you could have uh, all your information related to why when you use this uh, kind of a uh, thing so just mm. for ease in management really yep <clears throat> yeah okay this okay. is yes, the third one link you can check on the ha, ha, I, I i opened it it's the macmillan kana yes yes <clears throat> ryan and team made that right yeah they are also ah. designs also done this but to development from our end we did hmm okay so this is a good one to look at also yes yeah i think we are at the end of an hour uh nilesh sohel you can take it ahead uh yeah okay so i think uh, so i shared the the form with you guys so if you can just fill it up and submit it yeah the assessment is just to understand how we understand the design system like in a day to day design task or any other task meeting ha uh, so el mera isme ek mark gaya main is sab tum log ki baat aur wahan pe form bhar rahi thi to ek mark mera gaya ha aisa hum log ne bouncer question rakha hai nahi 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 wo bouncer are karuna mera bhi gaya so after that Next then time. and i said like shit wo answer kyu diya it's anyway <laughs> Exactly. When when I check my answer, I realize why he left. Yeah, Shabnam. Uh, Rupali, is this design system only limited for the frost based products, or if we are uh, designing some new products, then we can accommodate this design? And uh, this is only for frost product. Okay. yeah so this is designed in a way and uh, all everything that is set up from the design tokens to the patterns and all of that is primarily for frost okay yeah all right okay. so yeah. if we are through, yeah nilesh yeah, yeah yeah we are through so thanks everyone for joining yeah thank you pasuel yeah, nilesh and tarupali yeah it was a good session okay. thanks everyone yeah yeah, yeah. You guys. very good work huh? yeah good work thank you thanks thanks nilesh and soel thank you thanks for thank you. joining cheers thank you bye bye Yeah, I think we can stop the recording.